This is NHK World Japan. We bring you the news from Radio Japan on Saturday, October 12th. I'm Fumiko Konoye. And I'm Risa Shimizu. In our top stories, one of the most powerful storms of the year is forecast to make landfall in Japan on Saturday. U.S. President Donald Trump says his country and China have reached the first phase of an agreement on some issues in their trade talks. And Japan and South Korea have held their first meeting about a trade dispute under the framework of the World Trade Organization. Now the news in detail. One of the most powerful storms of the year is forecast to make landfall in Japan on Saturday. Typhoon Hagibis is expected to bring record-breaking rain and wind to Tokai and Kanto, including Tokyo. The Japan Meteorological Agency says that the large and very strong typhoon is on a northerly path over the Pacific, south of the main island of Honshu. The agency says Hagibis is packing winds of 162 kilometers per hour near its center and has gusts of up to 216 kilometers per hour. It says the typhoon is likely to maintain its large storm zone and extreme strength as it approaches Tokai and Kanto on Saturday between late afternoon and at night. The storm is bringing heavy rain to wide parts of Honshu, especially in Tokai and Kanto, where downpours may reach record levels. Weather officials say they may issue emergency warnings. Strong winds are expected to buffet wide areas from western to northern Japan on Saturday. Caution is advised for possible record-breaking gusts in Tokyo, or rather, Tokai and Kanto. Weather officials are urging people to keep track of the latest weather bulletins and local evacuation advisories and to flee to safety before conditions deteriorate. Authorities have ordered thousands of people in Mie, Shizuoka, Gumma and Chiba prefectures and Tokyo to evacuate their homes immediately as Typhoon Hagibis barrels towards Japan. As of 12 p.m. Saturday, the directives apply to more than 52,000 residents in parts of Ueno village in Gumma, Minamiboso city in Chiba, Oshima town in Tokyo, Kikugawa city and Oyama village in Shizuoka and Ise city in Mie. An evacuation order means authorities consider the likelihood of a disaster to be imminent and are urging people to immediately move to safety. Evacuation advisories are in place for about 4.25 million people in Ibaraki, Gumma, Saitama, Chiba, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Yamanashi, Nagano, Shizuoka and Mie. More than 7,000 households in the greater Tokyo area are without electricity. As of 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, the power has gone down at about 6,000 households in Chiba Prefecture, some 1,000 in Ibaraki, roughly 200 in Saitama, and dozens in Tokyo. In preparation for the typhoon, mobile phone companies are offering free Wi-Fi service, mainly in the Tokyo metropolitan area. The service is being offered in Tokyo and the five, five prefectures of Kanagawa, Chiba, Saitama, Ibaraki and Shizuoka. Users can log on to the network 50 at locations where Wi-Fi is installed. That's 00000 Japan. Users will then be able to access the internet free of charge regardless of which service provider they use. The companies are calling on users to be sure they are safe and to keep up to date on the storm's progress. You're listening to Radio Japan of the NHK World Japan Network. U.S. President Donald Trump says his country and China have reached the first phase of an agreement on some issues in their trade talks. These include agricultural purchases, intellectual property, and financial services. The two governments held ministerial-level talks in Washington on Thursday and Friday. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin met with the Chinese delegation led by Vice Premier Liu Hu. The meeting was the first among senior negotiators since July. 
President Trump has said the United States will put off implementing a measure to raise tariffs on $250 billion worth of goods from China from the current 25% to 30 from October 15th. Attention is focused on whether the trade frictions between the world's two largest economies will be avoided and whether concerns about the slowdown of the global economy would ease. Japan and South Korea have held their first meeting about a trade dispute under the framework of the World Trade Organization. The two sides failed to narrow their differences. The approximately six-hour talks took place on Friday in Geneva, Switzerland. Last month, Seoul launched a WTO dispute settlement procedure over Tokyo's decision to tighten export controls on three high-tech materials. Junichiro Kuroda, the Director General of the Japanese Trade Ministry's Multilateral Trade System Department, represented Japan. He said he told his counterpart that Japan believes better controls are needed for the three materials which could be used for military purposes. After the talks, he said he had explained that there have been cases of improper trade controls involving raw materials on the South Korean side. Chong Hye Guan, Director General of Multilateral and Legal Affairs at the Trade Ministry, represented South Korea. Chong suggested he had reiterated his country's stance. He said Japan's measures must be scrapped because they are export restrictions that violate WTO rules. The two governments agreed to hold a second meeting. The U.S. Department of Defense has announced that it will send additional fighter jets and interceptal missile units to support Saudi Arabia's air defense system in response to recent attacks on oil facilities in the kingdom. The United States and Saudi Arabia blame Iran for the September 14th attack on Saudi oil facilities, but Tehran denies any involvement. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper told a news conference on Friday at the Pentagon that the evidence gathered so far implicates Iran. He revealed that the U.S. is sending additional forces with two fighter squadrons, one air expeditionary wing, two Patriot missile batteries, and one terminal high-altitude area defense system. The U.S. Department of Defense says that since May, it has increased the number of forces in the Middle East to about 14,000, including an aircraft carrier and its strike group to counter any threats posed by Iran. Alexei Leonov, a Soviet-era cosmonaut who became the first human to conduct a spacewalk 54 years ago, has died. He was 85. Leonov died at a Moscow hospital on Friday after a long illness. Leonov was born in 1934 in the former Soviet Union, when in his 20s he was one of the Soviet Air Force pilots selected to become part of the first cosmonaut group. He was sent to space on a Rothhaupt II capsule in 1965. He gained prominence by performing the first ever spacewalk for about 10 minutes, secured by a tether. In 1975, Leonov commanded the Soviet crew during the Apollo-Soyuz mission, in which the American module docked with the Soviet craft. Finally, let's take another look at the top stories at this hour. One of the most powerful storms of the year is forecast to make landfall in Japan on Saturday. And U.S. President Donald Trump says his country and China have reached the first phase of an agreement on some issues in their trade talks. And that was the news from Radio Japan of the NHK World Japan Network. I'm Fumiko Konoye. And I'm Risa Shimizu.